We are covering this Trump trial with the Stormy Daniels testimony, her first time on the stand. We're joined by former SDNY civil attorney Maya Wiley and veteran journalist Jacob Weisberg. He's now with Pushkin, but I should note he was one of the first journalists to speak with Stormy Daniels all the way back in 2016. He was then the editor-in-chief of Slate. Daniels showed Weisberg at the time that NDA agreement before, of course, there it wasn't even signed, but that was one of the slate items uh, that was part of the evidence then that's become, well, a big part of the criminal evidence now. Uh, thanks to both of you for being here. I'm going to jump right in, but I wanted to give that context because, Jacob, you had those conversations then, and they came up in court today. Daniel's testifying. She spoke to Slate Magazine. That's one of those things, Jacob, where I think she means you, but we all make it sound more formal. She spoke to Slate in October 16 about her, quote, sexual encounter with Trump, and the magazine wasn't going to pay her for the story. Uh, you did not publish at the time because you couldn't get her on the record or enough of the details. You can tell us about that. After the story went public, you wrote about that, and you noted that she went silent right before Election Day. A week before the election, she stopped responding to calls and texts. Um, so starting with you, Jacob, it was in a way foreseeable um, that some of your early reporting would come up um, and all of this matters legally as they try to disentangle uh, who bought her silence, who covered it up, and whether that is ultimately part of a campaign scheme. Um, but first, I give you the floor um, since you were invoked today. Your thoughts? Her testimony today was remarkably consistent with what she told me in 2016. Um, it was consistent on the facts. I think her feelings about what happened have changed. So her description of being in the room with him, about, about his, his daughter, to put her on the apprentice, what he was wearing, all of that totally consistent. But I think she now feels that there was more of an element. She told me about it in 2016. Her view was very blasé. I had sex with Donald Trump. No big deal. It didn't. It didn't affect me. Now she's she, she seems increasingly unhappy about what happened. Um, she didn't say he forced her. He didn't bar her from leaving the room. But um, she didn't like what happened, and that's that's the only element that I think is really significantly different from what I heard from her eight years ago. Hmm. Uh, Maya, your thoughts on all of that, and it's always a, a challenge if. An incident is old enough. There are many incentives in the law to try uh, to deal with things recently. And even if they get old enough, you're not allowed to deal with them. Um, and yet it is, it is fine from the court's view for her to have more feelings. She has been attacked and maligned, and people have human reactions to that as long as, as, long as her underlying account does not somehow uh, become perjurious. Yeah, the jury's job is decide the facts and decide whether they believe the witnesses, which witnesses they believe or don't believe. So the most important thing is whether the facts are consistent, because the job of the defense here is to suggest that Stormy Daniels is interested in money and willing to lie for it or has had and changed her story over time for different reasons. And I think Jacob's point is an important one, one that Molly also made in the previous segment, which is the consistency, and that is something that helps juries figure out who they want to believe. But I would say that, you know, the most important testimony from a legal standpoint, when you look at what facts matter most, is the when she was asked on direct examination by prosecutors when the question was, are you trying to sell your story and not getting a bite until that Access Hollywood tape, right? I mean, that was basic the line of questioning, and she said, yeah, it's after the Access Hollywood tape. That we started getting a lot of calls. <laughs> and so I, I, when you really get to the root of the case, there is testimony after having established her, you know, hope what the prosecutor's job, her credibility in terms of the detail of her memory and the case and why she should be believed is believe her when she says that it traffic picked up and the desire of Donald Trump and Michael Cohen to buy her story was after that Access Hollywood thing. Right. And you mentioned the money, which was an issue, of course. She told prosecutors and under questioning today, quote, the money didn't matter, excuse me, money didn't matter to me. She said she didn't even pick the number. And Cross, they pushed back, but you were looking to extort uh, President Trump, right? And she says false twice. And Jacob, money came up 
uh, during your interviews as well. Uh, you wrote, I told Daniels that Slate did not pay sources, but encouraged her to come forward without compensation. Um, this statement she made today, and again, the jury may care about this, given this is a hush money case, um, does also echo something she said before about her motivation. It was really I don't think two things. Trying to keep the story from coming out so that it would not hurt my husband and my daughter and I wouldn't lose my life. And that there would be a paper trail and money trail linking me to Donald Trump so that he could not have me killed. All I had to do was sign this piece of paper and collect $130,000. So, Jacob, I think, again, being as fair as we can try to be, you can break it into two pieces. Uh, one, is she telling the truth today, which is what the jury's instructed to care about? And two, um, was money ever a factor? In other words, it could have been a factor without it meaning that she's making anything up. Uh, the Trump folks are sort of trying to muddy that. Uh, but given your exchange, your thoughts on the above? Well, she definitely cared about money. I don't think she cared whether the money came from the press paying for the story or the money came from Michael Cohen to suppress the story. I think she think, thought this thing happened, the story has economic value. And that was at the root of my argument, as it were, with her. I wanted her to come forward and reveal the story without payment. And she said, no, this story is worth money. And if you won't pay me for it, I want to see if somebody else will. And I think she was simultaneously trying to negotiate with other media organizations and yeah. with Michael Cohen. And I think she was probably indifferent to what she got paid for, that is, whether to reveal it or her silence. Um, but she thought the story had value. Yeah, and Maya, I mean, here's where we could be as transparent as possible. We got lawyers and journalists all around. Uh, sometimes when, when we're working on a story in the press, people want things that we do not give them. I know there's plenty of cynicism about media, um, but we operate under NBC standards and handbook. We have review, layers, lawyers. Uh, we don't buy stories. Uh, we don't make deals. Uh, we don't say, oh, uh, if I can get you for the story or the interview, then, then we won't bring up X, Y, Z. Um, and that sometimes is why you lose out a story, particularly to different media. If you're going to a you know, British tabloid or TMZ, uh, they don't operate by those rules. Um, so I'm curious what you think about all this, Enquirer. because or the, or the Inquirer, clearly, uh, and, and I don't even mean that with shade. I just mean, let's talk factually about what they do and don't do. And so um, I'm curious what you think, again, for the jury. We're not, we're not having some high-minded journalism class here. We could do that on another day. But for the jury, I want to be clear. The Trump lawyers are trying to say, if you wanted money and then you took money, then maybe you'll say anything for money. Um, and she's sort of arguing, and I think the, the, by extension the prosecutors are kind of arguing the opposite. The thing she had, as Jacob said, it may have had value in the marketplace, quote unquote economically. Um, and so that thing was not a made up story. It was a, a provable or largely true story, at least according to the DA's side of the case. Untangle that for us, Maya. Yeah, I mean, it just in the simplest terms, there's a big difference between extorting money, and uh, which makes you someone who maybe is not as either likable or believable, versus profiting from a story, right? And what the things the jury has to decide is whether they believe her, part of what the defense attorneys are trying to do, and why, you know, and it's a it's a, a great cross-examination tactic we heard from a defense attorneys is actually use the word extortion when what you're really saying is, didn't you want to make some money? Because there's a big difference between you had a story you could sell, but it's a true story, <laughs> versus we're going to suggest that you would want it to make money by any means necessary. Uh, and so it's a way of trying to cast aspersion on her character. Doesn't actually matter why she wanted to make the money. Matters whether the story was true, and that's why I keep going back, and what parts of the story were true. Because their job, is, is we, you, we know as lawyers, if, if you're the prosecutors, is to establish the real point here was the unlawful interference in an election outcome, right? That's, that's part of what prosecutors are trying to establish as motive. Because there's nothing illegal in a hush money case, meaning there's no case in hush money. 
the case comes from falsifying business records uh, and then why you falsified them and whether you were con covering and concealing another crime. So that's why it's, the, you know, defense tactic is the distraction of extortion as a sort of red herring in the case that's trying to suggest that she's not someone you should trust, meaning she's not someone you should believe. But that's why I go back to the testimony on direct, which was the story picked up after that Access Hollywood tape. That's their argument in their opening statement and throughout this case about the motive of Donald yeah. Trump. They have to show his intent. This was a sense of another example of evidence that was saying, yeah, and in fact, it did pick up as a sale when I was having trouble selling it before.